Okay, we take a look at the last part of Law of Sines, which is going to focus specifically on the last case that we did. Okay. So I'll talk, talk more about that case in a second. But just a reminder of what the Law of Sines is. Sine of alpha over A equals sine beta over B, which equals sine gamma over C. So we have that in your notes from yesterday. And remember that you're only using two out of three parts at a time. You're either going to use the first two, you're going to use the last two, or the first part and the last part. All right, so let's see. When we're using law of sines, okay, there were three types of triangles that we could solve with law of sines. ASA, which is angle side angle. Angle, angle, side, which you could also write as SAA, that's fine. And then the third case, the one we ended with yesterday, was <coughs> side, side, angle. This one is different because uh, you're given two sides to start with. Anytime you have this case, you always have to use inverse trick. Okay? The first two cases, no. You never have to use inverse trick. Okay, just the third one. And this, we can really break it down into three different things that can happen. Okay, yesterday, and in the homework, the problem that you ended up solving had one solution. Um, does anybody remember what else can happen besides the one solution, Pete? Um, no solution and two solutions? Yep, you could get no solution. That's the nicest because we start to solve it, we realize right away it can't be solved, and we're done. Or we can get the two solution case, which isn't necessarily harder, but it takes longer because we just have to do everything twice, the same stuff twice. All right, so uh, let's take a look at an example. Again, I will leave these boxes uh, with a little extra space in them, just in case you need to write two numbers in them. And they're telling us that A is 6, B is 8, and alpha is 35. Now, the stuff that's given is done. You never have to worry about finding anything else about A, B, and alpha. Those, those are done. The only thing, three things you have to worry about is beta, gamma, and C. That's it. So first thing we uh, usually try to do is to make this a little easier to visualize so we can see what kind of triangle it is. And um, James, to make this a little easier to visualize, what, what could we do? Um, you could draw the triangle. Yeah, let's draw it out so then we can see, wait, is this the angle that's between the sides? Is the angle not between the sides? Where, where is this angle? All right, so let's draw it out. All right, so remember, however you draw it, keep A across from alpha. Let's go with that. Let's put B across from beta. And put C across from gamma. All right, so then, um, describing that triangle is one of the three types that we talked about yesterday. Um, which type is this one? In terms of like this, S's and A's. Like in terms of, you know, is it angle, angle, side? Is it side, angle? Uh, you know what? What type is it? All right. So let's see. This was side angle side. You would have to know a side, the angle between them, and then the other side. So in this case, we don't know the angle that's between the sides. Oh, um, G. 
Um, Help us out. SSA. Yep, this is SSA. It is two sides and an angle, but the angle that you know is not between the sides. The angle that's between the sides is gamma. If you knew gamma, uh, that would not be helpful with anything I've taught you this week. You would not be able to solve that problem. You can do side angle side, but that's tomorrow. Okay. So this is side, side, angle. Now, is this the case that could have the zero, one, or two solutions? Yes. Okay. It's the only case out of the five we're going to learn that you have to check for the two. So let's um, go through and see what we have to find first, because with side, side, angle, you have to do something first. So uh, Raven, what do I have to find first here? I have to find beta. Okay, when you've got side side angle, ignore the road that's empty. Because you can't can't do anything with it. So we're gonna do that one first. Alright, so let's set this up to find beta. Alright, so Colby, can you tell me when I want to find beta what I could fill in on one side? Oh, would you do the sine of 35 over 6? Yep, that's what I would start with. Sine 35 over 6. That's good. And Jacob, what would I put on the other side, um, given that I'm going to use row B? The sine of beta over 8. Yep, sine beta over 8. Now we're going to cross multiply. And then we're going to get beta by itself. So actually, I don't even need to cross multiply. If I just multiply both sides by 8, that's gone. And then it ends up over there. So now I have 8 sine 35 over 6 equals sine beta. Yes, you can reduce the 8 and the 6. I wouldn't bother because you're just going to type it in on the calculator. So what's the difference if you press the 8 and the 6 button, or you press the 4 and the 3 button? It doesn't really matter. So I would leave it just like that. All right, so now uh, we have to get rid of sine. A sine is a function. So the only way to cancel it out is with another function, uh, but we can't use arithmetic. Yep? It would be inverse sine. Yep, we're going to take the inverse sine. Again, there's no multiplication happening on the right. I'm plugging this into that formula, and it's going to cause those to cancel. And then I'm going to plug all of this into the inverse sine formula. Just like I could plug numbers into the square root formula. Okay, same idea. All right, let's see what happens. So if I type this in and I get a no solution, assuming I typed everything in correct, well, assuming I typed everything in the right way, say it that way, uh, then there is no solution. Okay, if you typed everything in right and you get an error, then you know you're, you're done. So let's see what happens. Inverse sine, 8 sine 35. Make sure you close that to tell the calculator you are done with the sine of 35 and then divide by 6, and then close it to tell it you're done with inverse sine. So, I did not get a no solution, and I did type everything in, correct, in the right way. So, this means we have at least one answer, 49.886. Let's write that down. Cassie, do you remember what we subtract that from to check for a second answer? I'm going to subtract that from 180. Let's do 180 minus 49.886. If there is a second answer to this problem, it's 130.114. Um, Autumn, what angle was I given to start the problem? How, uh, what angle? Alpha. Alpha, and how much is alpha? 35. It's 35. 
can I fit the angle that I was given, a 35, and 130 in the same triangle? Yeah. Okay. 130 and 35 only adds up to 165. So this time, the second angle is small enough that it works. So we have to write that down as a second answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go like this. We're going to use the same table to really do two problems. And the way we'll set it up is like this. We're going to have a beta 1 and a beta 2. The beta 1 and beta 2 are two separate problems. We're going to have a gamma 1 and a gamma 2. Again, those are two separate problems. And a C1 and a C2. Two separate problems. If you want to kind of see what, what I mean by like the problems, let's call it like the red and the green problem. This angle is going to be in the red problem. Beta 1 will be part of the red problem. And gamma 1 will be part of the red problem. For the green problem, alpha is going to be in the green problem. Alpha is in both. Okay, that's a shared angle between both problems. Beta 2 is in the green problem. And gamma 2 is in the green problem. So we should have three red dots for the angles. And we should have three green dots. And we have pretty much the same thing over here. A is in the red problem. B is in the red problem. C1 is the red problem. Now you should see six red dots. Three angles, three sides. And for the green problem, A is in the green problem, B is in the green problem, and C2 is in the green problem. So there's three pieces of information that are shared in both problems we're going to solve. A is in both, B is in both, alpha is in both. All we have to worry about is finding what's in these boxes. You don't have to find anything else for A, B, and Alpha. Those were given to you, they're done. Okay, so let's write down that second answer, 130.114. All right, so now the next thing uh, we can do is, well, actually, you tell me, can we get the answers in the C box, or can we get the answers in the box with Gamma? What do, we, what do we have to do next? Yeah. I just have a question. So would you add the 35 to the 130 or no? Would you just leave it? Uh, to find which angle? You are going to add those up. Two. To find gamma 2, yes. Okay. You're going to add the 35 and the 130 and subtract that from 180. And that's how you get gamma 2. So okay. we, can, we can do that one first. Because those are in the green problem. So that's going to give me 165.114. 165.114. So that means gamma 2 is 14.886. How am I going to get uh, gamma 1? What two angles would I add up? And subtract from 180. Ava? 35 and 49.886. Yeah, the 35 and the 49.886. That's the other problem. Okay. So let's add those up. Uh, 35, actually, you know what? I can do it like this. 180 minus, take the 35 and add it to the 49.886. Just added the two red angles up and subtracted from 180, and I get 95.114. All right. So now we have gamma 1 and gamma 2. Now we can find C1 and C2. You use gamma 1 to find C1. You use gamma 2 to find C2. And Besides those rows, we have to use them because that has the row in it that's missing something. What other row do you think I'm going to use that has everything in it? And I can use this row uh, for everything because it's in both triangles. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, row A. So if you were solving for C1, technically, you have another row that has everything in it, B and beta 1. That's a red row. But I would kind of stay away from beta 1 because it has a decimal. So if you're going to solve for C1, you need to have another red row that has everything. Let's stick with row A. That's in the red problem, and it has everything. So let's find C1. So we can do sine 35 over 6. 35 over 6. Now I need to fill in the other side. Katrina, if I'm going to find C1, what would go on the other side? And yep, the sine of 95.114 divided by C1. Sine 95.114 over C1. Yeah, I'll come right back to that and solve it. Let's set it up for C2. C2 is the green problem. So we need to use a row that's green and it has everything in it. I would stick with row A again. Because that's, that's in both, and it was given, so we know it's correct. Any question why I can use row A again? Okay, so sine 35 over 6. Right. And how about, um, Jody, can you tell me what would go on the uh, other side? Sine 14.886 divided by C2. C2. Okay. And again, hopefully you can see why I said I don't think this is harder. I think it's longer. You have to just do the exact same thing repeated. Um, all right, so cross multiplying each of these. Let's see what we get. You're going to have 6 sine 95. 0.114, and then we're going to divide by sine 35. Notice I haven't touched the calculator yet to type in C1. I had to do that to get this 95.114, but I try not to use the calculator multiple times throughout the problem, because every time you use the calculator, you're writing down a number and you're rounding it off. So try not to use it unless you, unless you have to. Uh, and I have to at this step. C2. Let's see. That's going to be 6 sine 14. 0.886. Divided by sine 35. Okay. We'll type both of those in. So this is why I'm having you go to three decimal places. Because if you're going to three decimal places... There's no reason why your answer should come off like that far off from what it should be. Okay, so three decimal places this is pretty accurate. So six sine ninety five one one four divided by sine thirty five. So for C one, you're going to get ten point four one nine. 10.419, and for C2, we've got 6 sine 14.886 divided by sine 35. That's going to give me 2.687. So if you had something like 10.5, You'd still get credit for that. If you had something like 10.9, no, that's too far off. Especially when you're going to three decimal places. You shouldn't mess up the first one by that, that much. And a problem like this would count as six answers on the test. So you get one point for each one of those you get right. Yeah? Can you go over how you got gamma one for a second? Gamma one? Yes. So we looked at 
the three angles, because gamma 1 is in the red problem. So we looked at the three angles that were in the red problem, which is alpha, beta 1, and gamma 1. So we took 35, we added it to 49, and then subtracted that from 180. Thank you. Yep. Okay, any uh, other questions on that one? So let me make a sketch. Uh, and most of the time, I tell you these sketches aren't to scale. Uh, this one's going to be pretty accurate. I'm going to make a sketch showing you how you can have two triangles that have a side, a side, and an angle in common, but they come out totally different. So me again, this is just something you can you can really just watch me do this. And I'll ask you a couple questions as I go to make sure you agree with, with what I'm doing. Right, I'm going to take that side and make a copy of it. Does everybody agree that that side and that side are still the same length? Okay. So I have a side in common. Now I'm going to take this side. I'm going to make a copy of it. But I'm going to flip it. Now, does flipping it around change its length? No, so it's still it's still the same length. So I'm going to put that right there, and that's exactly the same length. So we have two sides in common, and now we need an angle in common. Well, I don't have many choices left here. All I can do is make the bottom side, and then um, I'm really done. Does anybody see the angle that they both have in common? Where is it? Yeah. Where is it? Um, well, I don't have any names here for Greek letters, but can you describe where? Like the one on top. The one at the top? Yeah. All right, let's group all this together and see. Uh, let's just move it up. Um, so I don't think the one at the top is the same. But do you see which other one is the same? The left. If I line them up, it's not exact, but you can see it's pretty close. The angle on the left is exactly the same. So that's an example of how you can draw two triangles that have two sides exactly the same length, one angle exactly the same size, but they look totally different. This is what just happened in the last problem. You can't do that with any other type uh, that we're going to study. Only side side angle. All right, so let's take a look at this one. So this time they're telling us that A is 2, C is 1, and gamma is 50. Now I know what side side angle is by looking at the table. And the way I can tell is I have a row with everything in it. That's the bottom row. And I have a row with nothing in it, and no way to find anything in that row. That's how I can tell it's side side angle without a sketch. You've got a full row, and you've got a completely empty row, and there is no way to find anything in that row. Can't do Pythagorean theorem to get B, because we don't have a 90. And I can't add two angles together and subtract from 180 to get the third one because I don't have two angles. I only have one. So let's, uh, let's go through and see what happens. All right. uh, so Vivian, what do I have to find first? Um, yeah, you have to do alpha first. Forget about the middle row. There's nothing in it. Set it up. So we're going to have our proportion. And Don, can you tell me what would go on um, one side? That would be the front half of You put two on the bottom. Right? Yep, you put the two on the bottom. It's fine to put the variable on the left. I usually put it on the right, but there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. And Pete, can you tell me what's going to go on the right? No, 
Well, what row do we have to use? Because it's the only we oh, can't wait, use. No. Derp, 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 derp. Oh, you got it? Uh, it's uh, sine of 50 over C. And C is how long? Oh, one. One. Perfect. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Okay, so um, all we really need to do here is multiply both sides by two. You can cross multiply, but when you cross multiply by with one, it doesn't change anything. So I would just multiply both sides by two times two times two. Okay. Well, that's going. Now we've got sine alpha equals two times the sine of fifty. Right. Now I have one step left to get alpha by itself. Aiden, what's the last thing I have the to do to get rid of sign? Good. Take the inverse sign of what's on the left and take the inverse sign of what's on the right. Okay. So let's type that in and see what happens. The inverse sign of 2 sine 50. Yeah, what'd you get? Error. You got an error? That's an error. Did you type it in right? Yep. You sure? I double checked. You double, you triple check? I triple check. All right, triple check. <laughs> Let me try it. Inverse sine of two sine fifty. Wait, what'd you get on the triple check? Still a domain error. Still a domain error. Did anybody else get a an error when they tried to type it in? Well, let's try a more expensive calculator. We'll see what happens. Inverse sine of 2 sine 50. Oh, I got the same thing. So I got a, a domain error. And we talked about inverse sine. And we talked about last week what it always had to be between. And it had to do with how high and low the graph of sine goes. Anybody remember the highest that sine goes? Normally, if you don't don't do anything to it, and the lowest, yeah. Was that just one and negative one? It was one and negative one. Look at the number inside the parentheses you're trying to take the inverse sine of. It's two sine fifty. That's one point five. That's too big to take the inverse sine of. It has to be between one and negative one. So that means there's no solution for alpha. Okay, let's write that. Down. So no solution. Now, in this step, we would normally take the two angles we have, add them up, and subtract from 180. But I don't have an angle for alpha. So what does that mean about beta? Yeah? Would that also be no solution? There's no solution for that, because I can't get the other angle to add to 180. And if I can't get an angle, then I can't get the side that's across from it. So this is a no solution problem. It's impossible to make a triangle with those side lengths and that angle. And I'll try to sketch it. I'll use a protractor and I'll try to sketch it perfectly to scale and you'll see what happens. Uh, question? So if you find no solution for one variable right off the bat, does that mean automatically the whole thing is no solution? Yes, assuming you didn't make a mistake. Yeah. So anyone have a thought what's going to happen when I try to draw this? I mean, it's going to try to be a triangle. It's going to want to be a triangle really bad. But, yeah? You have, like, an open spot. Yep. Sides aren't going to end up connecting. So what I've drawn, and I already drew a 50-degree angle just to, and I actually, that is using a protractor. So that's drawn perfectly to 50 degrees. And we need a side that's one unit long, and we need a side that's two units long. Basically, we need a side, and then we need a side that's twice as long. Okay. So let's make... Make a side, we'll call that one A, and let's make a copy of it, group it together, and what did we call that one? Uh, that's, oh, that's A, I'm sorry. So the first one is C, this one is A. So let's group those together. All right, now, the long side, which is two units, has to be at a 50 degree angle. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it to as close as I can. 
That's good enough. It's a little off, but that's fine. So I can't change that now, because that's set at a 50 degree angle. So I have to leave it at 50, because that's what they gave me. Now, side C is one unit long, and that's going to be over here somewhere. That's where side C goes. So let's take side C and put that over here. Now I can't rotate it, it doesn't have the little green thing. But if I did this little trick, if I group it with something, and then I can erase it. I don't know why I have to do it that way. Now it's got the little green thing, I can turn it. So, so there's side C. Now the bottom side has to stay perfectly horizontal. If you change that, you'd be changing the angle. You can't change that 50. But what you can do is you can make this side as long or as short as you want. Because they didn't give that side to me. So you can make the bottom side as long or short as you want. And you can rotate C any way you want to rotate it. Those are the only two things you're allowed to change. So will they ever come together to make a triangle? No. no. To make a triangle, you'd have to do one of two things. Either allow me to make side C longer. That would work or allow me to make this angle smaller. But those are two things I can't do because they were given. Can't change the information that was given. So that there is no triangle here. Okay, questions on that one? Right, so that's an example of a, of a two solution and a no solution. And which one do we want to do? Let's do, let's do this one. Look at a word problem. So in this uh, word problem, what's going to happen is someone is going to be trying to measure the height of an object in the distance, something far away. From them. And the way you can do it, you either need two people, or one person can do the same thing twice. But if you only have one person, you basically need to stand in one spot, take a measurement, and then back up a certain distance. It can be any distance you want, a mile, 10 miles, as long as you know how far you back up, and then take a measurement again. So this surveyor is going to take two different measurements, citing the peak of the mountain. So he would need some kind of instrument like a transit or some kind of scope where he could aim something right at the peak of the mountain and know the angle that he's aiming at. If you've ever seen people like on the side of the road, sometimes there's like a tripod set up and they're looking through it and then there's like another tripod further down the road, they're lining up and they're measuring, maybe they're measuring property boundaries, somebody's going to build a house, they want to know how big of a lot they have. Uh, they could be measuring the grade because when you build, you want to make sure, like, if you're building a new house, that when, when it rains, the water goes away from the house, it doesn't go towards the house. So they might be measuring elevation. You could be measuring all kinds of things. All right, so this surveyor is going to take two sightings of the peak of the mountain, and they're going to be done 900 meters apart. The 900 meters, that's easy, because you could just be in a car, you know, take a, take a sighting, Get in your car, use the trip meter, and then drive 900 meters and stop. So that, that distance is easy to figure out. The angle to the top of the mountain uh, it takes a little bit more sophisticated piece of equipment to figure that out. Um, but we've, we've actually made things that can figure out the angle in class. We've used like a protractor with a string hanging from it with a weight, and you put a straw on top of it, and the straw is like your sight. So you hold the protractor and you make it so you can see the object you're looking at through the straw and then the string hangs down and it tells you the angle using a protractor. Um, but they have much fancier stuff. So the first time that the surveyor measures the angle to the peak of the mountain, it's a 47 degree angle. And then as they back up, think about what would happen to the angle as you back up. 
it would it would go down. Think about like uh, if you're looking at like a movie screen. If you're in the front row and the screen's right in front of you, you might have to look up very steep. If you back away from the screen, the angle that you look at drops down a little. You don't have to look up as much. So when the surveyor backs up 900 meters, the angle's a little bit smaller than the first time, 35 degrees. And the device that the surveyor is using is called a transit. If you Google a transit, you'll see what it looks like, but it's a device you could use to measure this. And we'll assume that the transit is level with the ground, which isn't really true. Usually the transit is on a tripod, so it might be five feet off the ground. And you'd have to take into account that five feet. That's fine. All right, so a lot of information there. Um, what do you think the first thing we should do here to make all this information easier to understand? Yeah, Jake? Draw it out. Yep, I'm going to draw it out. Now, don't even think about like trying to draw triangles. Just draw the objects in the word problem, and triangles will naturally happen. So what is an object from this word problem we need to draw? Sun. We need a mountain. The sun? What? Did you say the sun? No, I said the mountain. Oh, the mountain. Okay, they said the sun. We can put the sun in. But that won't work. Um, so we need a mountain. What about even more basic than the mountain? We need something else. You can't have a mountain unless you have yeah, the ground. So let's start with the ground. So here's the ground. And we've got a mountain. It's a, a good mountain. Yep, a real good mountain. I like that. We do that every year. That's the best one yet. It kind of looks like a dinosaur when you tilt your head. Just extend the ground a little bit. Okay, so we've got the ground, we've got a mountain, and the surveyor is going to mark, take measurements from two different spots. So we need to mark two different spots. We don't know how far apart, we don't know how far away the mountain is, but we do know how far apart these two spots are. Oops. Um, how far apart are the two sightings? Yeah? 900 meters. So this is 900 meters. So when he sights the mountain, he's pointing something right at the peak to get the angle. So let's draw a dotted line in. It represents maybe like a laser being pointed right at the peak from that spot. And then again, from that spot. The first time he measures the angle, what, um, what, is, what do they get? The first sighting. Yeah? 47 degrees. So that's 47 degrees. An angle, it's called angle of elevation. It's the angle that if you were like shooting something and you had a target, you'd have to tilt you know, whatever you're shooting, a cannon or something, at that angle to be aimed at the mountain. Right? And then what's the second angle to the peak? Yeah. 35. 35. And the goal is to find that. That's the height of the mountain. So let's, uh, we've got a few different triangles. Let's take a look at the, um, let's take a look at the right triangle. Let's look at this one. All we have to do is find the height in that triangle. So maybe we don't even need all this other stuff. We, we probably do. But let's, let's just look at it and see if we can. So here's the triangle. That's what I want to find. I know that's a 90, and I know that's 47. Okay. Do I have enough information to solve for the height in that triangle? No. It's a right triangle, but anytime you want to solve a right triangle, you have to know a side. So, no good. We gotta, we'll come back to this one once we know something more. Let's put that off to the side. All right, let's take a look at this triangle. So this triangle is a little bit more complicated because it doesn't have a 90. But we have a lot of numbers in it. We have all kinds of information about it. Let's move that down here. 
Um, how long is the bottom side? Yep, John. Well, it's an exact tracing of what I had up there. So the bottom side would be 900. Yeah, that's exactly what I traced. 900. This angle in the lower left is how much? Yeah. 35. Now, what I really need is this angle in the lower right. How would I get this angle right there? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. You just do 1 minus 4, sorry. Yeah, right? It's the supplement to that. That's 180. So just minus 47, and that'll tell you what the angle is on the inside. Okay, so 180 minus 47. All right, so that gives me 133. Now, to use law of signs on this, you have to know an angle and a side across from it. That's your full row in the table. Do I have an angle and a side across from it right now? No, not yet. I've got this angle, but I don't have this side. I've got this angle, but I don't have that side. And I've got that side, but I don't have this angle up here. But can I find that angle up there? Yep. 133 plus 35 to subtract that down Yeah, just take 133. I'm going to add the 35, and if you subtract that from 180, you will get 12. Okay, so we're basically finding the only things we can. There's nothing else we could even be trying to do in this problem, because we're very limited with the information. So this angle is 12. Let's call this side A, B, and C. Anyone have a guess what side I want to find there? Because if I find it, it will tell me something in the red triangle. P? C, what do you want me to say? I want you to say whatever you want to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 a. A. So if we line these triangles back up, this is side A up here, right? Does that side have anything to do with this right triangle? No way, you would have find You would have find. You want to find C. You want to find C. Because C is a side that is shared in the black triangle and the red triangle. It's the same side. I put it right there. So if I can find side C, then I'll know how long the hypotenuse is in this red triangle, and then I can figure out anything I want from there. So let's set this up to find C, which is really the same as that side. All right, so let's find C. Anyone think they can tell me, looking at the diagram, what I would put on the left side? The sign of what over what? Yes? Um, there's one. <laughs> yeah, Is it a sign of 35 over A? Uh, would these be in the same row in our table? 133 in A would be in the same row because this is alpha. Oh, yes, the size of 133. If we wanted to solve for A, yes. But we don't want to solve for A. We want to solve for C. Yep. Sine of 12 over 900. Yep. Sine of 12 over 900. This is my angle. This is gamma. Oh, that's actually beta. That's beta. 
That's B. So we're dividing sine of an angle divided by what's across from it. That's how your table is always set up. Sine of an angle divided by what's across from it. Now, what angle would I use to find C? I'm going to think of it again. Sine of an angle divided by what's across from it. Sine of 35. Yep. Sine 35 over C. And now let's figure out um, what C is. Cross multiply. It's going to be 900 times the sine of 35. <coughs> Close your parentheses. And then divide by, you tell me, what am I dividing by? Yeah. Sine of 12. Yep, I'm going to divide by the sine of 12. Divided by sine 12. So this is a problem where you really have to find two things. Even though they're only asking you for one, you can't find the one they want you to get right away. So the first thing we found is the hypotenuse, which is 2,482.9. Uh, let's just go two decimal places. Uh, eight, eight. So 2,482.88. And side C is exactly the same in those two triangles. Any question why those two sides are the same? because the triangles are right next to each other in, in the problem. All right, so now, we don't have to call this C anymore. We can cross that out and put 2,482, what was it? 0.88. Plus you. Now, do we have enough information to find the height in that triangle? Yes. Once you have a side, now you're good. You can use law of sines again, but this is a right triangle, so we can use what we learned uh, two weeks ago. This is your angle. This is your side. That's your side. What's the name of the side that's farthest away? What do we call that one? Yep, me. That's opposite. So be thinking of a trig function that has opposite. And what do we call the side that's across from the 90? Yeah, hypotenuse. What trig function relates those two sides? <clears throat> Opposite over hypotenuse. Yes? Sine. So sine of 47 equals opposite over hypotenuse. The only reason I can do this is because I have a 90 degree angle. That's why I'm going back to what I did two weeks ago. You could use law of sines again, but I think it, it might be more work than, than this. So sine 47 equals h over opposite over hypotenuse. And Mateo, what's my last step um, to get h by itself? Uh, you have to do... It's just like if you had a problem like this. A number equals a letter over another number. That's exactly what this problem is, is like. What do you do times 10? You do times 10 on this one. So what would you do on that one? Times 2,482.88. Yep. Both sides. Multiply both sides by the denominator. 2,482.88. And we get height of 1,815.86. And I think that was, yeah, that was meters. And that's the height of the bottom. All right. Any questions on, on that? So the biggest thing really on the word problem is you've got to make a sketch. That, that makes it a lot easier to visualize. Don't worry about saying, well, how am I going to draw the triangle? Don't think about drawing the triangle. Just think about drawing the objects, and triangle will just happen.
Right. Well, that's um, that's it for law of science. So homework tonight is uh, same section as last night. It was two sixty seven. 29 to 35 odd, and then 39 and 43.